aliens exist and President Trump knows about it. That's according to Israel's former space security chief. Whatever they are, there's a whole fleet of them. They seem to defy the rules of physics, hovering in the wind, stopping instantly. NASA just announced the discovery of 500 new planets. They're all orbiting other stars, not our sun, but one of them shares some similarities with Earth. In our previous video of the series, What Astonishing Space Discoveries Jade LST Can Make, we talked about one extraordinary galaxy that started forming in the dawn of time and really has flabbergasted the standard galactic model of physics. Moving forward one step, in this video, we will discuss one other fundamental objective that made the basis of the Jade LST mission. That is the most intriguing question raised in the mind of almost every great scientist whenever they look above the sky. Are we alone in this universe? Is there another race out in the dark space, millions of light years away, and intelligent enough to converse with us? Since the time of Galileo, after the invention of the first space telescope, we have always been pursuing this question, but the odds were always against us. The main hurdles were the determination of the atmosphere that can support life, or the fact that there can be other atmospheres different from the Earth, present in the exoplanets that can support life. We have never been able to know these things. In addition, the distance between exoplanets has also been a problem. So, can JDLST solve all these problems to find the answer to one of the most burning questions in human history? Or will we have to wait further before we can have satisfying answers? Let's find out in this video. Before we start analyzing exoplanets deep into space, let us first evaluate why the Earth is so unique that it holds vast intellectual life. Our Earth formed 5 billion years ago and after 9 billion years of the Big Bang. Life started on Earth in the form of archaea bacteria about 3.7 billion years ago. The simple prokaryotic bacteria transformed into single-cell eukaryotic organisms, and then from single to multicellular plants, animals, and fungi. Charles Darwin's evolution and his essay Origin of Species is extraordinary work in this regard. Charles Darwin's theory hat archaea bacteria took on this planet needed some special assistance, and that assistance came from Mother Earth. Our planet is present in the ideal habitable zone of the solar system. A habitable zone is a place in the planetary system where a planet is present at an ideal distance from its star so that it will get just enough light and energy that it would not either burn life or not freeze it to death. For instance, Mercury is too near to the Sun that the average temperature in the day is 354 degrees Fahrenheit. At night, it goes down to minus 330 degrees Fahrenheit. So this harsh temperature is not supportive to life. Ideal atmosphere. The presence of methane, carbon dioxide, and carbon monoxide at the time when anaerobic unicellular organisms were flourishing made the basis of multicellular aerobic creatures. The production of oxygen, ozone, and water vapors during the complex process of photosynthesis have enabled the Earth now to support life for complex multicellular and intellectual species like humans and other animals. Apart from this, the presence of sulfur oxides, nitrous oxides, and methyl chloride have given complexity in the metabolism to the different species of various kingdoms present on the planet Earth. There are very few exoplanets we have seen to this date that has a very dynamic atmosphere like the Earth, which has just the right amount of every ingredient required. The 9.8 meters per second square gravity of planet Earth is another perfect thing to support life. If we increase or decrease just one number from this ideal figure, life would shake heavily on Earth, and after some time, it is highly likely that we will find no living organism here. For example, if the gravity were 11 instead of 10, flora and fauna would have more weight, and they would have collapsed. More frequent comets and celestial objects would encounter and fall on Earth, and who knows, it might destroy the whole planet. If we decrease it to 9 or 8, the atmosphere will start disappearing into space. The moon will come closer and ultimately collide with Earth. So there would be no more ideal system for life that we have just discussed. Now let's go into space and see what Webb can do to find aliens there. To determine whether there would be life on a planet or not, we follow some simple steps. 
First, we analyze if a planet is present in the habitable zone. Even though we have roughly analyzed a planet outside our solar system, but we have identified that there are 300 million exoplanets in the Milky Way galaxy that can support life. After the identification of the habitable zone, the primary responsibility of JWST is to analyze the bio or techno signature of that planet. Biosignature is the presence of gases like methane, carbon dioxide, and sulfur oxides, released by organisms during metabolism. Technosignature is the detection of the presence of radio signals and any other signal by alien life on the planet. Unfortunately, J2ST cannot receive technosignatures from a planet. For this purpose, we have a very large array, VLA, telescopes run by SETI. JWST can identify the biosignature of a planet in the Milky Way galaxy. However, unfortunately, it cannot detect oxygen, ozone, and water in the atmosphere, which are the main gases produced by photosynthesis and fundamental requirement to support complex multicellular organisms. However, it can detect oxides of sulfur, methyl chloride, and methane along with oxides of carbon. This detection of these gases can still help to find alien life as we know that it is almost impossible for methane and carbon dioxide to coexist in an atmosphere because they are highly unstable and cannot be present where living organisms do not independently exist. Whether or not JWST will succeed in this quest, there will always be two possibilities. The best case is that we will be able to find the biosignature developed by living organisms intelligent enough to transfer information with us. The worst thing that can happen is we will detect nothing except carbon and sulfur due to volcanic activity, but that is still a win-win situation. Perhaps we will get to know things that might upgrade us as a race. As you know, knowledge of the unknown leads to the most desirable pleasures. Before we sign off, there are some philosophical questions that demand answers. If there are intellectual races present, why do we expect them to converse the same way humans do? They might do this in another way which we cannot understand. Or why are we looking for the same atmospheres necessary to support life forms on Earth? It is highly possible that some other life needs entire different kinds of living conditions. Perhaps we do not even know what we have to look for. Or we are missing the right frequency to tune in. Either way, JWST has kindled our enthusiasm one more time with more access to other exoplanets of the Milky Way. We will surf better on the rays of light in space, and it is just the beginning of large scale to answering our very fundamental question. Are we alone in the universe? Please like the video and subscribe to the channel, and also let us know about your feedback in the comment section.